my new shop and new house here, and we've only been here since July. But it's like one of the things, like knowing my numbers and synced up has helped me to get to this point already because I knew, hey, I'm generating enough income and we're doing enough work in a week or two week period that month to month we should be good. And then even floating it through winter time, we should be good. Yeah. So yeah. it's like nice to kind of know, hey, all the numbers are right. You know, we're hitting our budget marks and hey, we're looking good for the end of the season to wrap this thing up this year. I appreciate your support of Synced Up. I know you've bring, you've been an evangelist and brought a bunch of people over. It's an honor to have you, you know, part of the Synced Up crew. It's an honor to be part of your story with your business growth. And it's been incredible, like what you've done. Like you were telling me uh, 900 last year and what this year? Fingers crossed we can hit, you know, 1.6 this year, I think. Really. Second year. Realistically, yeah, we've already cleared one three. And that right there is why you would spend a couple hundred bucks a month on a software right out of the gate because Definitely. two years in, $1.6 million company and uh, profitable. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. there's people that have been struggling for 10, 15, even all their lives and never hit that. Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Cost of Doing Business show. I'm your host, Wesson Zimmerman, and today I am in Baltimore, Maryland with my buddy John from Baseline Outdoor. And uh, man, we've been having a good time this already this afternoon. Yes, we have, and we haven't had to go far either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your job's right across the street. Yeah. So that was awesome. Kick it off with, tell me who John from Bayside Outdoor is. So my name is John. I'm the owner here at Bayside Outdoor Living. We've been in business now for, this is our second year in business. Like we just hit two years in July. Um, so we are up and coming, um, but we've pretty much grown pretty rapidly over the last two years. Um, with using the Synced Up program, I think it's been a monumental thing for me to be a part of the program and using it in order to push ourselves forward in order to be profitable and be able to sustain some growth as well. So tell me your story, how you got started. Like you, you, you were telling me that you were working for another company. <clears throat> yeah. So I was working for another company and uh, just kind of felt like I was doing everything A to Z except for taking the check to the bank at the end <laughs> of the day. I was quoting the jobs, managing the jobs, you know, dealing with the crews, ordering the materials, collecting the check at the end of the job, dealing with all customer complaints and problems. And, you know, I just said, you know, this is enough with this. And, kind of got to the point with it where I didn't feel like we were going to be making, you know, too many tremendous mistakes, you know, learn enough to where I was like, okay, well, we've done this, we've done a little bit of this, we've done this, I feel confident in all these different, you know, aspects of the field. And I've made enough mistakes to where, you know, I won't make those mistakes again. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be stuff that happens. But, you know, for the most part, I felt pretty confident going into this, that I could create a business pretty quickly. And you know, gain a decent following to where, you know, we're busy enough to keep going and you know, that's kind of where we are. And it's you and your brother. Yep. So right? I'm the owner. My brother's my project manager and my purchaser. He helps me manage job sites, you know, getting around to different spots every morning is a little bit difficult sometimes. So he, he helps me, helps me keep the guys in line, um, helps me get stuff out the job sites. He's doing a lot of the back end of the business. So some more of like the number checking, um, those types of things so mm -hmm. like receipts and hey this is going into this job with the synced up program and things like that so uh, we're getting more into it um, he's getting more involved with synced up which i think is going to be very important going forward for us just to know all of our numbers all the way around the board mm -hmm. um, and then and then kind of go from there so when you started it was beginning of 2020 right mm -hmm. yeah. it was literally in the middle of COVID. That's and, crazy. And people were like, I couldn't tell you how many people told me, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And I'm like, this is the time to do it. Yeah. And it's like, if I'm ever going to do it now, I'm never. And, you know, I was nerve wracking, nerve wracking at the, be at the beginning, but I don't regret a second of it. And even when it gets tough, like, you know, it's tough there, it's tough here. So yeah, it's and, just a matter and of- And I think uh, it actually ended up being a really good time to start a business because like at Tussie, like, they grew like 70% in two years. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, it, it just so happened that that whole thing brought about like people were spending more time, you know, spending yeah. more time at home. They wanted to do something in their backyard and definitely yeah. investing more into the family space. And I think yeah. a lot of people got so locked inside that they wanted to get outside. And it was just like our phones were ringing because we were the extension of the home where people were locked in at home. The other thing is like vacations kind of held off for there for a right. while. So I think a lot of people spent a lot of money that they would have spent elsewhere on vacation right. and outdoor dining and all the other stuff and just decided to throw it in their backyard. Right. Yeah. Um, so last year when you started, like how many, like did your brother join you right away? Yeah. So my okay. brother was on, we were all on a crew. I was working in the field. 
Um, it was me, my brother, and another one of our, our buddies. And uh, yeah, we installed some, some pretty nice jobs. We made the catalog, an E.P. Henry catalog with just the three of us. And, um, you know, ever since then, it was like, I think last year towards the fall, I, you know, got another truck and grew another crew and um, just been kind of going from there. This year, we haven't really grown too much more. I've been kind of trying to keep everything where we're at with two crews and keeping busy yeah. and, and stuff like that and just learning to manage what we have and, you know, not not taking like growth. We want to grow, but we don't want to grow too fast and kind of yeah. have issues and stuff. And we're kind of to the point where we're it's enough to manage right now before we get into the next step. And I don't think we're far from it, um, but it's just a matter of making sure we have everything square before we get to that next yeah. step too. So you were telling me it was your, you and your brother and your friend last year, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. um, now you're like, what, we had just ate dinner and there's like eight or nine guys? Yeah, we've got seven guys in the field. I've got a salesman, I've got my brother. So there's technically like nine or 10 Not, of us total. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there was, a, there was a group of us ha hanging around the uh, food there. Yeah. <laughs> Which was great. That's quite a... Uh, ready, ready for nap, nap time. Exactly. It's like nap time. We're sitting down to do a podcast and snore off. Oh, yeah. Got you some good food. Yeah, exactly. That was a great shrimp burrito. Um, so, um, from moving from three people, your brother and another and a friend from last summer to nine people, This that, that's been pretty incredible growth. Yeah. Um, what, what do you attribute, like... Like, how did you get your name out there to begin with? Like, cause there's, there's a lot of people that are like, want to start and do what you did. Like, how mm -hmm. did you get to that point so quickly? So I had like, I've, I've had the same cell phone number since, since I was probably 15. Yeah. And so I've always had the same number and, you know, dealing with, even though I was at another company, a lot of the times the customers would deal with me individually. And I've had customers that have reached back out to me or customers that I've dealt with in the past that refer me to people, um, you know, through social media, we've able able to get from jobs your previous and, jobs. You mean like customers, like from pr yeah, like it, you know, working at my previous um, previous employer. Yeah, like so and so, like hey, I worked with John when he was at Greenscapes. I still have his number, and he passed my number along. And huh. I'm basically like, hey, I'm on my own now. This is my company. You know, here's their information if you want to reach out to them. And most of the time, they say, you know, we want to work with you. We heard the experience is good with you. Wow. And so I'm like really big on you know, making sure that my customers are happy all the way through the process. And I want them to be excited about the job just as much as I am excited to go do it. And just as much as my guys are excited to go do these jobs. Like I was trying to tell a customer like, you know, this is your project, but it's not your project to stress about. It's my project to stress about and make sure it's done correctly and make sure that you're happy at the end of it and all those types of things. And I think like making it a user friendly experience all the way from synced up. And like, I constantly get people telling me, man, you're, your estimates are thorough, they're very professional, and you know you, you have the ability to go in and customize your stuff because like every time we go out to a quote, someone's like, hey, can you itemize that area, itemize this area, and itemize like this area, maybe I'll do some this year, maybe some next year, or whatever. Well, we send it out on through Synced Up. You know, it could be you know, removal and disposal of the existing patio. Well, say the customer doesn't like the total, total price at the end of it, and they wanna conquer the removal and disposal themselves, well, they know that they can take that off the the quote and they can move forward with the project we take take the role on from that point but they have mm -hmm. the option to select deselect like when it comes to outdoor lighting drainage all these different things that we'll add into into the quotes mm -hmm. and give them the option to kind of tailor their project to the way they want and where it fits their budget too. yeah and i would say it's a best practice like if somebody calls you out there for a patio and that's all they ever mention mm -hmm. like Give them an option to like plant some plants or like do the, do the landscaping oh, yeah, we, around it or do the, add the lighting. Like always throw in those constant, optional upgrades. Constantly. Like, you know, people are always like, oh, how did you sell that? And it's like, well, because the customer didn't ask for it, but I put it on the design. And once they yeah. saw the design, they had to have it. And, yeah. you know, they see the price and it's something that's doable, then they're going to do it. Yeah. You know, once they see something, then they have to have it. It's a little bit like There's, when you order the steak, do you want the mushrooms on top? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You, you know, you can't go backwards now. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I've already, I've already gone and I've seen what the lighting will look on my house. And it's like, I can't envision this project now without the lighting, yeah. even though they didn't know that the lighting was an option or hey, I didn't know that that aquascapes feature was an option. Exactly. Yeah. But it is. And like the biggest thing with sales is like, just like anything else, you go and you're selling a product, people don't know the full extent of the product. Like you might talk about synced up and you might say like, hey, the general points of what it's capable of doing, but there's multitude in the, in the facets of it that it's able to do. Same thing in landscaping. People just don't understand 
what what there's capable of like hey there's this type of stone there's this type of stone there's this type of patio there's so many different you know mediums that we can use and people just don't understand what what all those things are they mm -hmm. don't know what's possible and if you can come up with a design and they have to have it then that's how it works mm -hmm. yeah and the other thing i actually I, the blog that's coming out this weekend on my blog is is actually what i what i wrote about this very thing like when you do um like upsells is an incredible um avenue of increasing your not only re your revenue but also your profit because it's mm -hmm. like it's easy money because you are already there you already spent all the money to take the trucks and the crews and the equipment and everything there that's it's already there mm -hmm. so adding on another five ten whatever grand in, in upsells is like it's cream of the crop like, yeah because you, you're not like driving out there for a five thousand dollar job you're taking a twenty thousand dollar job and adding another five thousand to it exactly and sometimes like if it's lighting you can almost like pretty much like it doesn't need to add a day to the job you can still kind of get you it can done. kind of get yeah, that done yeah. within the same incremental yeah, time yeah exactly depending on how much wire you got to bury yeah. and everything yeah. whatnot but yeah it's 100%. it's just awesome um and anyway what i was getting at is like okay so when you as a salesperson put it in your quote and you mm. send it out to the customer let's say they don't go for it let's say like matt we were hard stuck on our budget we're not going to do it well the cool thing is like in the synced up app like you or your guys from the field can actually see that, oh, hey, they went with one, two, or three work areas, but they didn't go for this one, the optional upgrade or mm -hmm. whatever. And then and then they can, like, I, I did this all the time at Tussie when I was a foreman. Like, one year I did over 300 grand in uh, upsells. And and just from just from you doing this principle right here, which is, like, I'd, as soon as I get scheduled the job, I'd open it up, and I'd be like, uh, oh, yep, they got a, there's a work area in there that they didn't go for. It's crossed out, marked in red, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just kind of wait. Maybe I'd pick the sales guy's brain a little bit about it, like what he was, what they were talking about and why they didn't go for it and that kind of thing. And I'd just wait and we'd start the job, build the rapport with the client and all that. And like, and the other thing is, is the client doesn't really look at you as a foreman, as a salesperson. So mm -hmm. they, their guard, they don't, they kind of let their guard down a little bit. And they also trust you, like what you, they care what you think, you know? Yeah, and definitely. they like, oh, what do you think? You know, you know what's your suggestion? You're the one installing yeah. it. They're like, I want your, I want yeah. your What's your opinion? What's your and, expertise? Yeah. yeah. And so I'd, be, I'd see, I knew they would like not, didn't go with the lighting or didn't go with the bubbling rock or whatever. I'm like, hey, just, you know, did you think about doing a bubbling rock here? And they're like, yeah, the sales guy. Did. It's like, well, hey, while we're here, like it'd be way easier to do it now than come back later at some point and do it. Plus it'd be cheaper because we wouldn't have to bring all the equipment and stuff back. Yeah, you know, just do it. And I would do it so many times. <laughs> That's actually like, I never really thought about doing that. But I mean, <laughs> there was like um, one job I posted recently on the on a Facebook page and they didn't do any outdoor lighting and the job is beautiful. And I just, and it's like, there's no outdoor lighting. They have bistro lights over it, yeah. which look nice, but it needs to have like lighting around the, the rock features and stuff like right. that to kind of really make it pop the way I'd like it to. And uh, I, I tried so hard to push that sale. And he's like, well, maybe next year you already tapped me out. You already tapped me out. And I'm like, all right, all right. But it, it'll come. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't always, like, even what I was saying, it doesn't always work. Like, sometimes it legit don't have the money or yeah, whatever. It's like, but, hey, like, we're, we're, we're done here. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's, a, it's a great way, like, when the salesperson and the crew foreman are kind of, like, working together in collaboration like that. That's like, a, good, that's a good, good way to get my brother involved there and kind of upsell some of that there stuff. There you go. There. And, you know, the, the other thing we did to make it easy for us forming out in the field is, like, we had kits for all our water features. So we knew that, hey, that water feature cost eight grand, that one cost 16 grand, that one cost 30 grand or whatever. And so we could just kind of, like, sell off of that, like a menu. And lighting, we had 300 bucks a fixture. So, like, there was a lot of stuff that we could sell mm -hmm. that we didn't have to, like, hey, can you come out and quote this? It was just, like, really easy. So that's where the templates and, you know, kitting things out yep. is, is really, really valuable because it kind of gives it, it's a tool for your crew. It's easy for your customer to understand. Plus it's a tool for your crew to throw up sales in there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, what is, what is like your bread and butter, like your perfect project? Like the, this is what Bayside does. Um, I like to do um, low level ground patios and stuff like that. I, I do some contracting stuff, but I try to stay away from it just because it's too much headache a lot of times with permits and everything else. Mm -hmm. But I like, you know, open outdoor living spaces, outdoor kitchens, um, you know, adding water features in. Mm -hmm. um, I like doing landscaping. I've gotten more into boulder and natural natural stones. Um, it really just depends on the style of the house, what neighborhood mm -hmm. we're in, you know, a lot of different things, but I really do like lighting a lot too. And, yeah. and over the years, I've kind of come to love plants a lot more too. I see. Yeah. So what At is first the... I just didn't really care. I was just like, hey, let's sell the hardscape. Right. And now I'm like, well, the hardscape doesn't look as cool unless we slap all this stuff around it. Softens it up. 
Yep. Yep. Kind of brings it to life. I always tell customers like, wait, it's like you're freaking out right now because it looks awesome, but just wait until we put the plants in and it comes to life. Like you're going to be true. That's true. Yeah. Definitely. Um, like what, what would you say your average job size is in terms of price? Um, they range anywhere from typically like, mm, I'd say like cream of the crop is like 30 to 60. That's we what do, your favorite. Like yeah, what you, yeah, we do do some six figure jobs and this year I've sold over a quarter million on one job. Wow. But, Congrats. Um, thank you. And, uh, we'll just see. I mean, it, some of those bigger jobs are more headache, uh, more logistical more risk, nightmares. Yeah. yeah. A little bit riskier in mm-hmm. some of the aspects, but you know, you got to have some of those large style, you know, jobs that prove that you can do what you're saying yeah. you're going to do. And yeah. it feels good at the end of those jobs, even though it's they, a good exercise to kind of incrementally keep creeping that thing up, mm-hmm, you know, exactly. Cause when you do sell them, it's like, bam, you locked out six weeks on the schedule or, you know, and you, you suddenly, and that's where, that's where I was a couple of weeks ago until we still hadn't permit snags and everything else. So. Yeah. That's frustrating. So we're working through that and, you know, creating the jobs as they come, but, um, with synced up, obviously it helps you know, we can go out to a job site, like even like two weeks ago, I remember, hey, I went out and quoted this too, and I was like, man, I could come back and quote this thing in like 10 minutes. Like, I'll just come back, quote this thing and send it out and I know I can sell it. Yeah. Next day it was sold and it's like, you know, it's a $17,000 job and I sold it and I went and quoted it in 10 minutes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, those are really good for us too, because it's like good filler, three, three day activities yeah. or three yeah. day jobs and stuff. And I like those because it's, logistical like you have to know how to get all the material there to where it still makes sense to do it and be able to do it in three days Mm -hmm. i don't necessarily love one day jobs because there's so many pieces pieces to the job in order to get done i I feel like your day is like even as like the manager or the owner you end up spending like half your day running just to get the material that we needed just to finish that job in that one day stretch and then it's hard to get that value out of that one day where someone's like oh you're only here for a day and you want to charge this much but it's like you do realize how many moving parts I had in order to get that job done yeah. in, in that one day. It's not the, always the logistics easy. and the equipment and the team. Everything's the same, whether it's a five day job or a one day job. I like two week jobs. You know, you're out yeah. on the job site for two weeks. If we forget something, you know, we have a day or something. A lot of times where, hey, we can bring that tomorrow. We're not going to worry about that. Today. Exactly. We can move over here and get this portion. But done. a one day job, you don't have any forgiveness. No any, forgiveness. There's no you grace for your, that. You forget your seed, your straw, something, you're coming back. Yep. And Definitely. and you're coming back on a one day job like it's not yeah. you can get it the it's, next day. It's and just, you're like, oh, well, you didn't finish, or then you got to go back and hey, yeah, clean this up or clean this up or I want you to add this. It's like, mm. yeah, I always made tougher. fun of the the guys at Tassie that were doing the six week and two month jobs. I'm like, yeah, you got the easy job. Like us guys doing the one to three day jobs here. Like this, is- yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of park your stuff for a while. And <laughs> yeah, you, you can forget stuff, and uh, no, I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll just move on to that next year. Tomorrow, don't forget that valve. Yeah, Remind exactly. Me in the morning, we need that valve. <laughs> or, hey, we need that downspout connector we forgot today. Yeah. Well, um, you were one of, I have to look back and see, but you were one of the very first. I'm going to say you were probably in the first 20 or 40 synced up users that we, that we brought on. Mm-hmm. Probably even sooner than that. Yep. Probably, it's probably the first 20. So I anyway. I think I was asking you before you said it live. Like, when is it going really? live? When is it going live? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I didn't remember that. Yeah. Because it was like, I knew what was happening. I've been, I was watching you and I'm like, man, this sounds really good. I've been like, the last company I was with, I was like looking into Jobber. I was looking into MLN. I was like looking into all these programs and I couldn't tell you how many hours I spent with like, hey, come do a video tutorial. And it's like, then they just constantly call you. And then it was like Jobber. And it was like, good but it wasn't always what i was looking for and then i came across what you were doing and i'm like he does exactly the same stuff that we're doing essentially in the field and if they're creating this program that's re- like revolves around like you know project maintenance and quoting i said that's a great spot to start and i pretty much started my company i don't think i ever sent i might have sent that's a lie i probably sent like 10 quotes off of like quickbooks sure. when i first mm-hmm. started but it was very soon, like very quickly to that. I grabbed a, grabbed on a synced up and was like, this is where I belong. So um, I want to understand what's going through your head when you did that. Because like most people out there that are starting their business would say, I can't justify it yet. I don't have, like, I'm not a big enough of a business. And I, I it's easier. For, I can just do it cheaper for, 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 for free on QuickBooks or spreadsheets or paper or whatever, Word docs. So... What I'd like to try to understand is like what was going through your mind 
that you were just like, no, it's not even like, you just kind of like, you just went for it. I mean, when it comes to like business, I mean, one of the most important things is like knowing your numbers. Like if you don't know your numbers and you're not being profitable and you're ended up spending money to be at somebody's house and put in a project for them, it doesn't make sense for you to be in business. And, you know, I've, I've had a, a previous company and we, we, we had major success early on and then, you know, um, state funding and stuff just kind of flopped on us. And every year was almost like we were restarting because all of our customer base was like reapplying for all this funding. And every year we were kind of like restarting and it was almost like, you know, oh, this every year was like different. The budget became different and this and that. And it was like, I understood extremely how important, you know, having, you know, a debt schedule and all these different things in the business. And I realized quickly, like, you know, it's very important. Even when we're on a job site, you know how it is. If, if you don't have the right tools to do the job, mm. it's 10 times harder. Yeah. And this is a tool for us to do our job. Like I know if I go in and I quote a job and I've got all the material in this list that I know that I'm going to need, there's a chance that I might miss something, but more than likely I'm not missing the details of this job. And it's like when we get out there, unless something major happens or if it's change order related or something, like typically we're right on where we need to be. And like, even with ordering material, like half of the time, like my guys would be like, Hey, we got one layer of extra pavers or like, you know, two layers of this or, or occasionally I'll run like a pallet short or something like that because of imperfections and pavers or whatever else. And that stuff happens. But I'm like pretty accurate on all my numbers and what my square footage is and how much mm -hmm. pavers I'm going to need. And Hey, I need this much block. I need this many corners this many caps i need a case of glue yeah you know your base material like and what's key what's key there is like having that loop where you take your estimate and then you track your actual and then you compare your actual against your estimate and it's just this loop mm. that oh my actual was off i'll update my next estimate and you run a while and you oh here was an area where my actual was off i'll update my next estimate yeah and it just and, and your your future or your your history makes your future uh that much more accurate every time Exactly. It's like one of those things where it's like, I know, I know, like with even without even putting the actuals in there half the time, if I'm messing up or not already before it, because I gotta be like, oh, well, I, I got three loads of gravel on this job. and We just grabbed a fourth one today. It's like, yeah. Ooh, I got that one wrong. And I knew. Yeah. Um, and that's like, and that night might not necessarily be that I quoted the job wrong. That might have just been like, hey, we overdug. Right. And we're an inch or two too deep. And it's this big. Yeah, oh, that's a big problem. Yep. Exactly. So it's good to know, like, you know, with synced up, like my overhead is covered um, and it's, you know, probably fluffed a little bit here and there just so that we know we're not going to mess things up. Well, I'd rather have when you do your budget to recover your overhead. I, I, I tell people like when you're done adding up all your overhead, mm -hmm. throw another five or 10 percent in there just for a little fluff. You know, yeah, definitely. Because there's always things that happen like the equipment goes down and hey, you got an equipment budget in there. But sometimes it's like, yeah, there's new tracks already on the on the on the ditch, which recently and I was like, Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. You know, the tracks look, you know, they're, I got them in like December. Oh, really? Yeah. And one of them snapped the other day. So I was like, oh, that's fun. Yeah. So you just need that, you just need that fluff in your budget, like budget for the business you want to be plus for the, what I mean by saying budget for the business you want to be like, if you want to buy that mini hoe, mm -hmm. put it in your budget. Exactly. And if you can still, and then that, that'll incrementally increase your pricing. And then if you can still sell the jobs at that pricing, there's kind of like your permission to go buy that piece of machinery. Exactly. You know, you got the and that was like the, you know, we're, we're sitting in my new, my new shop and new house here. And we've only been here since July. But it's like one of the things like knowing my numbers and synced up has helped me to get to this point already because I knew, hey, I'm generating enough income and we're doing enough work in a week or two week period that you know, month to month, we should be good. And then even floating it through winter time, we should be good. Yeah. So yeah. it's like nice to kind of know, hey, all the numbers are right. You know, we're hitting our budget marks and hey, we're looking good for the end of the season to wrap this thing up this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but back to like you being willing to whip out your credit card and sign up for Synced Up before you were barely, barely even a business already. Like um, I talk to people that are, doing a million dollars, been in business for 10 years, and um, they just can't justify it. The, 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 it's the mindset thing. It's like you're stuck in your own ways. And I think that's what the problem was with my old company. It was like, 
you know, their finances were all over the place with this here and a little bit here and this there and this there. And like, I don't even know if they actually knew like what the total overhead of the company was or what yeah. they were actually costing themselves. And that's a risky place to be. And I think it's just like one of those important things to like know exactly what you need to be, where yeah. you need to be. And like customers say like, hey, sometimes you're, you're a little bit more expensive. Uh, you know, we have brand new trucks. We have brand new equipment. We have, you know, yeah, we do nice work. You know, it, it doesn't, it, it kind of, you know, you got to play, you got to pay to play a little bit yeah. in some of the, in the aspects of it. Like, you know, if you want the guy to show up with the pickup truck that's rusting out and oil dripping on your driveway, more power to yeah. you, but we're not going to show up and do this. Things. Yeah. And, and the other thing is like, you can, you can serve a cheap customer or you can serve a high end customer. You can mm -hmm. kind of pick where you want to go. Yeah. And then, so let's say you do want to serve the high end customer. Okay. Be the high, like you said, the new the new trucks and the and all that, like, and then build your budget based on the costs of the model that you're running, and then you need to unapologetically charge those prices for your work. And if you get a no, no problem. I understand that I'm too expensive for you. I'm just going to move on and find my next yes. Exactly. And like yeah. a lot of times, like we were just having a discussion about a one day job, and a lot of those one day jobs are like the people just don't have the finances in order to like, like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one day job, but it's, you know, even if it's three to $5,000, hey, that's like majority of my savings in bank right now. And they're gonna be the kind of customer that's just like, by the end of the day, they're like, what about this detail? What about this detail? Yeah, they're, like, they're it's nervous not that, It's not that, that we're not doing a good job. It's like, they wanna make sure they're getting their full value out of right. the money that they just like saved up for months and months. Right, and so then they just lap. dumped your whole saving, their whole savings account over to exactly, you. Exactly, yeah. versus like, it's somebody who's like, hey, I'm gonna drop $60,000 on my backyard and I'm gonna let you run with it. Yeah. Like, hey, here's your check. Like, you know, the meme that's on social media all the time. Exactly. Like 500 I mean, bucks or 50 bucks or whatever, this is changing my life, blah, blah, blah. And it's just 50 grand, it's like money sent, thanks. Yeah, 100% <laughs> real life. Yeah, it is. Real life. That's why I say like you can pick You can pick what you want to serve. Do you want to serve a, a cheaper customer doing those one day bush trimmings and mulchings? Or do you want to go do those outdoor living spaces and patios? Well, then you absolutely can. Just you have to You have to be fine though with the fact that those same customers that you used to work for are going to say no to you now because mm -hmm. like they can't afford you anymore. Yeah, and it's not necessarily the case all, all, all across the board. Like, People ask me all the time, like, hey, do you do small projects? Yeah, we do small projects. Like, and like a couple of my buddies who own businesses locally and stuff, they'll say like, man, how do you always get those big jobs? Or how do you always get that job? Or yeah. how do you always get that job? I said, because I have the small jobs and I don't take pictures and post them or I don't market them hard because it's not the avenue you know, that I yeah. want to do. I don't want to run around and do one or two day jobs. You get every what day you show. The, every day of the week. I want to do a job where it's like, hey, you're coming into my backyard and transforming this space. Like, yeah makes me feel good makes you feel good you're happy with it i'm happy with it yeah my crew loves it so it's like that's where we want to be in bread and butter like yeah you know one week jobs two week jobs three week jobs i think after three weeks you kind of get fed up with going to the same place yeah well we did a million dollar job at tessie it was like an hour and 20 minutes away Oof. and we we were driving there from october through july like october over a winter and all the way through to july it was insane. It's a lot of gas. <laughs> it's a lot of gas. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully you weren't hauling too much stuff every day. Oh, we were. Trust me. It was a haul. We were, yeah. I, we did a cool water feature up there. It was an awesome water feature. Split stream, bog at the top. Uh, fire, it was a pool and tremendous. Like, he was huge. Actually, it is actually too big for my taste. Like, I kind of like the more intimate, cozy. It, this was so big. You could have hosted 100 people here. Like, it was like a party Mm -hmm. place backyard you know? huge yeah and those, but, that could be overwhelming a little bit like yeah. i think like you know like like anybody like you get stuck in the same place every time you kind of just get bored of the same thing like hey we're at this job it's nice it's a cool job but like it's nice when you get like two weeks here you're at this nice view and then you go next two weeks and get a whole new view yeah. and it's like you know keeps it fresh yeah and like even like i'll i'll even like swap my crews out sometimes like like hey they're getting like a, a little bit stale over here. I'll just swap them out and put this crew over here. Or I'll take guys off of one crew and stick them with these guys and swap them out. So mm -hmm. they get a little bit of change in scenery if they are locked into somewhere for sure. a long period of time. Yeah. But I, I know when like we, we at Tussie, we kind of ran the model of you had your foreman and then mm -hmm. kind of his right hand man. So you had mm -hmm. your two base, two man base crew there. Then we had a bunch of like uh, summer help and, and uh, younger guys that would uh, 
kind of work with it. So, hey, I only need two people tomorrow. More than that, it's gonna be, we're going to be tripping over each other. Yep. Or like, hey, we're laying on a huge patio. I, need, I can take five guys, you mm-hmm. know. So we had a guys that would um, float yeah, it's kind of it's kind of what I do, and I like yeah. my drivers are the same drivers, and they pretty much have the one one guy that's always with them. Yep. And then I kind of float my other guys around, depending on like what we're doing today. Like, hey, it's a big lighting job. Okay, well, yeah. I'll send Nelson up over. But there. one of the things about those floaters is it's definitely important to make sure that they get the reward and the fulfill the fulfillment of being able to see that job wrapped up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's nothing more frustrating than being on it three quarters of the way through, and, and then not. Yeah. yeah, that's I was literally who was I having that discussion with? Mm, I forget who I was having a discussion with. But we were talking about like, well, um, oh, it was the Seven Figure Network group, oh, yeah. getting group, and they said, well, have you ever thought about having a crew come in and do the excavation, then have another crew come in and install? And I said, yeah. I said, but my whole thing about that is, is that that excavation crew is always just going to be frustrated because they want to do, like, not that they're mad that they're working, but they want to do the the final touches, the the, the fulfillment of like this is the completed Same project picture, so like yeah. you go in and you're just digging out and putting in gravel every day and you don't really have a picture of something to be proud of and take they go home with like hey look how how nice my base is screwed it out right. like, yeah it looks good but <laughs> we want to see the finish yeah and like i can't i can't justify taking a one crew and doing just prep work and one crew just doing finishing i don't think work. it's very efficient honestly I don't per- think personally so, yeah. i don't think it's very efficient that way Mm-hmm. I guess it depends on what for skill level you got you have. It depends on like, then what do you do? Pull the equipment off site and pull another. Set I know. Of equipment See, that's what I mean. Like, it's just yeah. It doesn't seem logistical, and I'm like real big logistically. Yeah. Like, how can I get everything I need More there? Efficient. How can I? Yeah. How can I do this? How can I do that? Like, you know, right now um, we don't have everything stocked up as much as I'd like to, but we typically are stocked with piping and yeah. connections and all the stuff that we can. Pretty much like any day, like, hey, we're going to need this. All right, we'll just grab out of the shop in the morning and go. So basically, I want to have like a smaller Home Depot inside yep. the shop here. Yep, that's important. And we're getting to the point where everything's starting to get depleted now. we got to kind of restock everything. But that definitely helps because it's like, hey, you know, the customer added in a downspout. Well, okay, we'll just get it tomorrow morning when you come back. Yeah, exactly. without having to run to a store somewhere. Yeah, without having to run or like send one of the managers. So let, or... me, let me ask you more a rhetorical question. Like what's uh, some of the, what's, what's the best piece of advice you've been given in your journey in business? I would say don't always take what everybody else's advice because if I would have listened to other people's advice, I probably wouldn't be sitting where I'm at. Really? Yeah, because like, uh, you know, there's so many people that say, don't do that or don't do that like you can't do that and like even like me my fiance asks every once in a while like oh you're gonna do that and i'm like yeah i'm gonna do that she's <laughs> like because like my whole thing is and this this is actually probably one of the biggest things of advice it's like you know you're gonna say you haven't done something until you've physically done it and you have to do it one time to say you've done that before so i'm gonna say hey i've never done that every single time somebody asks me to do it until i'm willing to try it yeah and it's like if you mess up, you know that you can fix it and get it done the way it needs to be done. And you know, we stand behind that. Like if we do something wrong, we're gonna fix it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But typically, you know, we're not gonna I'm not gonna be willing to do something I haven't done a lot of research for or if I sure. educate yeah, there's, there's a difference between doing like there's a, there's a difference between doing, being dumb yeah, and Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna go in and just have completely like, Yeah, I got that and I have no idea how to do that. Like, right. No, it's, there's a lot of research involved with that. There's a lot of like it's not just like I'm going in kinda like dummy blind, but you know, hey, I've never done that, but I'm to the point where I feel comfortable enough. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try that. Yeah, I often I also I, I often uh, ask, um, what is if you if you had to do it over again, what is something that you would go back and do differently in, in starting your business? And often it's a little bit like, well, I should have got something like synced up or figured my numbers out sooner. But man, you were, you were on the ball, so. <laughs> I've been, been rolling since. Yeah. And, I, and like, there's like other guys and they're like, hey, what, what program are you using? Like, what are you, and I'm like, I've been telling you it's synced up. Like, <laughs> now you're like, the biggest thing is like making sure at the beginning of the year, you really look at your budget and making sure like you're not missing things. And like, I think it's important to even like talk to other contractors and say, hey, send me your budget. Maybe take all the numbers away from your budget, but send me your items. So, the, like, so you're not forgetting something. Yeah, like, right. hey, let me see, like, what do you have on your budget that I don't have on my budget? Yeah. Numbers you don't, don't mean matter. anything, but yeah. let me just see, you know, like, the items. hey, like, hey, you guys are putting in for, you know, Gatorades and snacks and stuff for the guys every week. Well, or even paying guys over the winter so you, they can, so you, they're not like, go looking for another job through yeah, exactly, the winter. Exactly. Like, whatever you need to do. Yeah. Like, hey, there's money there for that. And, you know, 
however you want to work your budget, as long as you work your budget right and you're covering your overhead and you're making somewhat of a profit on there, your overhead's typically covered. Yeah. And that's all of those budgeted items. So if like, hey, you want to bring a new truck, put it in the budget. And if you right. can make it happen, make it happen. Exactly. That's I love that concept of build the budget for the business you want to be. Yeah. Even if you aren't there yet. Because mm. you want to build, you want a budget for tomorrow, not what you were yesterday. Yeah, and like the other thing is, is you have to have profit in order to be to grow. To grow, exactly. Because you can't just go and buy things and be week to week strapped for cash. Exactly. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Well, um, do you have any uh, questions for me about synced up or uh, what we're doing or anything at all? No, I mean I follow along. I, you know, you're really receptive to, you know, all of us and our concerns or what we would like to see and. You know, obviously software things take some time to develop, but you're constantly like wanting to know what's the next best thing for us or, you know, what can help you better your business. And I think you're starting to get into those things, especially with like a little bit more of like the Zapier thing. Mm -hmm. It seems like we can do a little bit more client relationship management, Mm -hmm. not to the over the top portion, but, you know, touching base with like automatic emailing and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. I'm really excited to kind of try some of these new features out and get into those because it's I mean, you're running a business you're running you know guys all over you're getting material you're ordering material you're missing material you're there's so many things in a day that it's just impossible to think of and if you can have an automatically an automatic system that you know takes a lead from the website puts it on the system hey i can yeah. schedule this now just get rid of that busy work just get rid of like yeah exactly like it's like the it's like an it's like the assistant type of work yeah. where it's like if we can automate it why yeah. would we not i know I actually, I know a guy that uh, uses automation so heavily that he still doesn't have an assistant. Really? He's pretty much automated the, th- <laughs> yeah, it's just ridiculous. That's I mean, cool. it's, it's not ridiculous, it's, it's good. Like, it's amazing what he's yeah. done. So you can definitely, like. Uh, it, who's this? Um, from New Jersey, Clay Go, no, Clay, no, what's his name? Clayton, Clayton Graba. He is in the pond world. He's big into Zapier and all kinds of automations. But like, um, once you figure out like, you, you get your first automation going and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then you're like, well, what else can I automate? You know, it's like, and then you, suddenly you start like designing your system and your process around like how you could automate the different pieces to minimize. But you all, there's also, you, there's ditches on both sides of the, of the road. Like mm-hmm. You could automate to the point where you feel untouchable or un, unapproachable or unreachable. Yeah, it's so almost there, like there's no personal. Yeah, yeah. Personal so there, there's ditches, there's a, there's a good and a not so good way to do automation, but yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it absolutely is, I mean, stereotypically, the landscape industry isn't really like tech geeks, Mm-mm. you know, so. And like when I send the estimates out and stuff like that, they're like, man, this is way more professional than anybody else's yes. quote. And it's like, it makes me feel good. And it's yeah. in my program, it's your program. And yeah. it's like, yeah, that like, it just solidifies that like, hey, we're in the right spot and we're using the right program. And these customers are like thoroughly enjoying the fact that this is a professional system. Right. I kind of get, I think like, I don't really even market the fact that I use synced up to my customers. I don't tell them about well, synced who up. Who cares? Like if your furnace guy comes to replace a furnace. Yeah, like what's, like, what's yeah. he using or whatever. Yeah. But I think it's like important to know like, hey, we're a very organized business because of the systems that we yeah, use. Yeah, that, that's a good sign. Like when I, when I call a contractor, like, or, you know, you call an HVAC guy or a plumber or whatever. And like, and, and whenever you get like, you can tell they're using technology, you get a text message when they're showing up or whatever. It's like, yeah, this is a good company. Yeah, this is yeah. Like, um, perfect example is like text message notifications and stuff like that. And my dentist office uses them. Right, and it's, it's like, cool. I am terrible about putting that kind of stuff onto my schedule, but I'd be like, <laughs> oh shit, I've got a dentist appointment to go to tomorrow, and it's constantly there. tomorrow. Then, I'm a, then, I'm usually like twenty minutes ago. Yeah, and then tomorrow, <laughs> and then I'll I'll be like thinking about it today, and then tomorrow comes, and I'm like already got a million things going on. And yeah. Oh, I got a dentist appointment today. <laughs> it's like those kind of things. That even though it's like an automated system, it's like that's great. They're useful. They're yeah, useful. that's that's what that's where automation useful. And I think you. like you know if we have a scheduled appointment and it's like we're scheduled. Hey, hey, we're booked out for this week's estimates. We're scheduling next week. I think that's an important feature to kind of offer to where it's like, hey, we're gonna hit you with a text message reminder. Yep. We're coming tomorrow. Yep. Or like even if we can automate like a scheduling. Yep. Like if we're like, hey, our project's scheduled for you to for you to, us to come to your house tomorrow. Like, you're gonna get a notification that we're coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, cool, man. I just want to say, uh, appreciate your support of Synced Up. I know you've bring, you've been an evangelist and brought a bunch of people over. Um, so it's an honor to have you. You know, part of the Synced Up crew. It's an honor to be part of your 
uh, story with your business growth. And it's been incredible. Like what you've done, like you were telling me uh, 900 last year and what this year? We're on track to hopefully, fingers crossed, we can hit you know 1.6 this year. I think real second year. Realistically, yeah, we've already cleared one three. So we'll probably, like I said, we have a couple of big jobs yeah. to finish up the rest of the year. Not even like we will, we're so efficient at this point that they probably won't last us all the way into the year. And That's... I have to send some, sell some more, but I'm telling you, dude, but uh, we'll hit our budget numbers for this year. We have moved. Yeah. I bought a property now. I have yeah. a property. And that right there is why you would spend a couple hundred bucks a month on a software right out of the gate because Definitely. two years in $1.6 million company and uh, profitable, make, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there's people that have been struggling for 10, 15, even all their lives and never hit that. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like it's, it's not like it's unattainable. It's attainable for everybody. It's more of the mindset and what you're, what you're willing to invest into and, and roll with. It's as big as you want to be. It's a matter of how many fires you can put out a day and how, how good of a fireman you are. I mean, it's or, like, or how good of a preventer of fires you are. That true. That's that too. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely a big, big portion of it. And cause we can stay busy as firemen all day long. Oh yeah. Never oh, fix the problem. All day long. Yeah. <laughs> You still have to be. You still have to be good at putting out the fire, not yeah. just showing up to. Yeah, it. yeah. So yeah, that's like. No, I mean, I think synced up has been a monumental piece of where I'm at now, and like even like bringing a, bringing my salesman on a couple of weeks ago, he's starting to realize like being in another company and dealing with what their cost codes and stuff are, and like looking at like we've compared some of the you know some of the pricing that he's used, or he know what the pricing was for that, and we're comparing it to ours, and we're like looking at it and I'm like that doesn't even make any sense like the material is this much yeah and you're only charging this much like where is the where's the labor hours where's the where are they making any money on this it's like and then he's starting to see like yeah man that's that doesn't make any sense and I'll say like you know he, I I was a square foot guy for a long long time square foot this walls are this big square foot this and it's like that never works yeah because everything is so custom like a wall could be, you know, the same wall could be double the price, just depending on things like access, elevation. Uh, yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how, like, does it need to be engineered? Like right now, I'm like, I'm just getting quotes back on engineering, and one's seven hundred, and one's seventeen hundred. Yeah, hundred. But it's like the guy who's seventeen hundred. It sounds like he's way more thorough. You know, hey, I'm looking to look for electrical lines, all the other stuff right. so that I know of like, you, hey, you get into this project, you excavate four feet behind this wall, yeah. you're not gonna run into any problems. Yeah. Whereas the other guy's just like, hey, like, yeah, let me send it, send me the plat, like I'll engineer it, you know, yeah. cool, we'll be done with it. Yeah. That's like, you pay for what you get. And I think just like having the right equipment on a job site, having the right equipment in the office is super essential. And Exactly. I mean, I stand behind it. Like, you, you know me, I'm like, hey, you guys need to do this. You guys need to do this. I have no problem telling people like what program I'm using because it's like, even like my local local um, competitors and stuff, like I'm not scared to tell them what I'm using or what I'm doing or, hey, there's like this awesome opportunity here for us. Like, there's so much, there's business around here. Yeah, there's so much opportunity. So much opportunity. It's like, whether we help each other or fight against each other, it doesn't make sense to fight yeah. against each other. Like, I'll help, like, do a ton of work with one of my buddies. He owns a maintenance division company and does high-end residential maintenance, and they crush it. And, uh, you know, I've been striving to get him on synced up, and I'm, I, think, I think he started, and I think he's this close, but I think we're, like, right there with him. But I think it's like very important to like get into these programs where you're knowing what you're doing, you're tracking your eyes around, like you're knowing what's going on within your business and it's customizable, you can drag schedule around, you can do all these things and it's not like I'm writing it down on a paper calendar and here I got to print out, print out the month's calendar again or print out last week again, I got to move four jobs and rewrite this whole thing and you know, hey, it's oh crap, that one went over a day. It rained yesterday, half day, so bump that one to tomorrow because it rained. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more. I guess it's more effortless. Yeah. You know, why you're already running a business, which is hard. Yeah, you, you got to have systems that are easy. Like, it, you want to set up systems in a way that, like, if basically, if it's not easy, it's not going to get done. Correct. And then you're into like no man's land. Like that guy does that way, that guy does that mm -hmm. way. So. You gotta have systems and they gotta be easy or they just won't get done. And you gotta invest in yourself and you know, this is one of those ways of investing in yourself. And I, you know, Weston knows that I'm in the seven figure um, 
landscape network Jim, and Jim Wirtz, right? Jim Wirtz, yeah. and you know that's been a huge component of like growing from last year to this year as well. Is not only just having synced up, but like having that resources and the mentorship to say like, hey, you cannot work in the field. You're not going to make money working in the field, running yourself around all day, and then coming home until twelve o'clock and doing quotes. Like, I try. Like, I have a, a nine. To be ten months old here soon, but you know, it's been one of my goals is to not only just have a successful company, but also be here for my family and like enjoy the things of him growing up. And yeah, you know, I'm, like through his mentorship program, it's like, dude, you need to get out of the field. You need to not be in your office yeah. ten thousand hours every week, and you need to kind of learn to manage and delegate, and you know, push people into these positions where they're working for you. Yeah. And I think that's important too. And it's just like one of these things with synced up. It's like you're kind of delegating these different areas to different people to rely on to do. And, you know, as long as you're using the program, it's useful. Yep. 100%. And we could be better at it. Yeah. Well, we're, we're here getting, to help. We're getting better at it and we will continue. But yeah. uh, just like, just a merely the estimation portion of it with the budget factor. If you did this, that alone, which I will not lie, that's been majority of what I do is pretty much just that portion of it. And, uh, just with that, I know I'm, I'm making money. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just like, like I told you before, if I knew I made a mistake, I knew I made a mistake. And yeah. Eh. Yeah. But my markup on material and markup on everything else, I know I have some room to kind of have an iffy, iffy day here or there. Yeah. As long as you're not consistently repeating it. Yeah, right. Well, man, I appreciate your hospitality. It's been good to come down here and hang out Thank in you. Baltimore. I'm happy that you came down. I Absolutely. Was ecstatic to hear you wanted to come. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's he want to come see me for? I'm, like, I'm yeah. trying to get out there and just because like, here's the thing, like when I was a foreman or when, when I was using other products at Tussie there, like it just felt like, like the products that we were using would do stupid stuff. Like why did they do build that? Like everybody in the whole Facebook group is asking for this. You know? mm -hmm. And I just feel like, I, I kind of like, I think it's easy for software companies to get out of touch. As we grow this company, I want to continue to just be in touch, to know what's mattering. And so that we're like, as we're developing new things like Zapier, for instance, that we know it's the right thing, the most effective thing we can do then, then the next, you know, and not be like, oh no, we know best. Hmm. No, it's gotta be it's the customer, the customer is num It's gotta be focused on the customer and their, and their needs. So. 100%. And so it's very important. Like, the biggest way we can make the the whole process from design to install is like having a system like this in order for us to stay organized to where we yeah. don't mess up and you know just being able to pull the project list and order all of that material yeah, at exactly. one time is just it, like, it just goes on and on yeah you know, my brother like loves it well good okay well hey john thank you thank you for coming and you thanks gotcha. for bringing the family too <laughs>